Alberto Balignetti, Alberto Balignetti, 1538-1585, was an Italian law professor, bishop, diplomat, and cardinal. He was appointed by Pope Gregory Roman XIII as a papal nuncio to Florence, Venice, and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. In that last appointment, he persuaded King Stephen Bathory to adopt the Gregorian calendar. He was promoted to cardinal priest but died before he could return to Rome for the ceremonies. Origins and Legal Career Alberto Balignetti was born in Bologna on 8 July 1538, the son of Francisco Balignetti, senator of Bologna and a noted poet, and Lucrezia Fantuzzi. He had brothers named Francisco, Alessandro, and Marcantonio who became a Jesuit. He was educated at the University of Bologna, a student of Gabriel Paleotto, receiving a doctorate in law on 23 May 1562. His father, who was then Gonfalo near di Giustizia, was present at his inception. After completing his education, he became a cleric in Bologna. He was a professor of civil law at the Studium of Bologna from 27 June 1562 to 1564 with a salary of 200 lire and then for nine years at Salerno from 1565 to 1574, where his salary was 500 scudi. Nuncio in Florence In 1574, Pope Gregory Roman XIII, a fellow citizen of Bologna, called him to Rome and named him a protonotary apostolic and referendary of the two signatures. He was then sent as nuncio to the Grand Duke Francisco 1574-1587 in Florence from 25 February 1576. The Grand Duke's brother Ferdinando was a cardinal himself, created by Pius Roman IV in 1563. In 1577 Bolognetti presided at the baptism of Ferdinand's son Filippo Cosimo. Nuncio in Venice and he served as nuncio in the Republic of Venice from 10 September 1578 to 12 April 1581. While on duty in Venice, on 27 April 1579 MSGR, Bolognetti was appointed Bishop of Massa Maritima by Pope Gregory Roman XIII. This gave him additional stature for a task that Gregory Roman XIII wanted carried out in Venice. Bolognetti had been ordered by the Pope to carry out systematic visitations of various religious houses in his jurisdiction, as he attempted to begin to do so in 1580. He was met by strong reactions from Doge Niccolo da Pont and from the Venetian Senate, who complained to the Pope who was forced to relent. In his report to the Pope, at the conclusion of his nunciature, Bolognetti gave particular attention to the Inquisition in Venice which, in his view, was concentrating mostly on people using incantations and Jews who were only nominally converting to Catholicism, in other words, policing undesirables rather than combating heresy. He further noted, the Venetians make extensive use of discretion, for they are bound by no laws but their own which are very general and compared with others, few in number. A doctor in law from Bologna would find such an attitude intolerable. Bolognetti's departure from Venice, at the end of March 1581, was apparently quite sudden. In a report from Cobham to the secretaries of Queen Elizabeth of England, dated 20 April 1581, it is noted, Monser, Bolognetto, who was lately nuncio at Venice, has arrived at Rome suddenly, whereon many comments are made, but nothing is certainly known. The Pope has lately sent to the Signory of Venice to have certain of his ministers visit the schools and other places for inquiry and reformation in matters of religion. The Signory have granted that the same may extend to monasteries and no otherwise, whereon it is suspected there will grow some little unkindness that way. The Bishop of Verona is constituted by the Signory visitor of those monasteries, being a Venetian gentleman. And the matter between the Venetians and the Pope about the Inquisition is appeased, and the Pope sends Monser Campigio to reside as nuncio at Venice. Nuncio in Poland Bolognetti was immediately appointed papal nuncio for Gregory Roman XIII to King Stephen Bathory in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. He served from 12 April 1580, 
1 to April 1585, under the most frustrating circumstances. The decrees of the Council of Trent were not yet being applied systematically in his assigned territory, they had only been accepted officially in 1577. Indeed, the hierarchy was in disarray to say nothing of the lower clergy. Presentation to church positions at all levels were under the control of the local magnates or the king. Selection had more to do with loyalty than with orthodox religious views or with a religious vocation. Numbers of both high and low clergy had gone over to Protestantism, some even to atheism, and unworthy persons had been appointed to church offices at all levels. During his entire stay in Poland, Bolognetti emphasized to the king the necessity of appointing only Catholics to office, but with limited success. Only Stanislas Hosius Hosjus was already fighting enthusiastically and doggedly for the Catholic faith and the teachings of the Council of Trent. King Stephen I. Bathory and Grand Duke Michael of Moscow, however, had reached an agreement to subject the church in Lithuania to obedience to the Roman Church, and Bolognetti was sent to put the agreement into practice. This was an opportunity and a great challenge. A report of his four years of activities was prepared after his death by his secretary, Orazio Spanaki, for the use of Cardinal Rusticuxi, the Secretary of State of Sixtus V. The greatest problems for religion in Poland, apparently, were the advance of Protestantism and the spread of indifferentism. Fognetti prevailed upon King Stephen Bathory to found the first house of the Jesuits at Krakow. He was following the lead of his most energetic supporter and friend, Cardinal Stanislaus Hosius, who had brought some Jesuits to his diocese of Wormia on his return from Italy in 1563, and had persuaded the Bishop of Wilno to give the Jesuits a church in his diocese. The Jesuits were the leading proponents of the decrees of the Council of Trent. They opened a college in Wilno, Vilnius, which was granted the same privileges and rights as the University of Krakow by King Stephen and by Pope Gregory Roman 1329, October 1579. In 1582, Bolognetti also persuaded King Stephen to apply the bull of Gregory Roman 13, which instituted the Gregorian calendar in October 1582. This act had repercussions between the churches which were in union with Rome now called Eastern Catholic churches and those which followed the Eastern Orthodox Church tradition, such as the Russian Orthodox Church. The calendar difference persists, one of many. In 1583, Rome had been made aware that Spanish agents were active in Poland, buying grain and other commodities apparently for provisioning their armies in the Netherlands and in Spain. Cardinal Ptolemy Galli, the Secretary of State, wrote to Nuncio Bolognetti with a series of twelve questions for Bolognetti to gather information about. Bolognetti, already well informed on the matters, replied quickly, on 11 June, with detailed information about the navigability of the Vistula, what lands it gave access to and what was the fertility of the land and its products, the circulation and value of money, Polish naval capacities and trade with Flanders, the port of Danzig where the English heretics, Pope Gregory Roman XIII made Bolognetti a cardinal priest in the consistory of 12 December 1583. However, he never received the red hat or a titular church since he died before he could come to Rome for the ceremonies. But his title in Poland was changed to apostolic legate from Nuncio. In its pride at Cardinal Alberto's elevation, the Senate of Bologna granted him an annual pension of 500 gold scudi. Sudden death, death. Cardinal Bolognetti died of a fever in Valach in Carinthia on 9 May 1585, according to Gaspar di Caro and Bayudit, or 17 May 1585, according to Eubel and Cristofori, or 23 May 1585, according to Ludwig von Pastor, having caught a fever while returning from Poland to participate in the papal conclave. He was only 47 years old. His remains were returned to Bologna and buried in Santa Maria dei Servi. He was the author of two books, one de Liege, Eurit Equitate Disputations Roma 1570-97 Folia, and two at Rub. Dig. The Verborum Obligation of his Commentary of Rome 1570-130 Folia.
A considerable number of his letters survive in various archives. His report on his Venice Nunciature is published by Stella.